What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. If you're new to the channel, I'm Wave Wire Queen. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. In today's episode, we are going to talk about my favorite players in 2022 at each position in fantasy football. So I'll give you my favorite player as a quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end. Let's get it. Welcome to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast with Waiver Wire Queen. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which is going to prepare you for your upcoming draft and should prepare you throughout the season every week to stay ahead of your competition and achieve your ultimate goal to compete for a championship. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to win, win, win. And that's all we're trying to do in 2022 is win. Let's talk about my favorite players at every position this year in fantasy football for the 2022 season. This list is going to consist of players that I feel are going to have a hell of a season. And if you can add any of these players to your team, you're going to be competitive and put a little fear in your competition's heart every week. And that's what it's all about. We want them to fear us. We ain't pump faking. We actually going to pump and execute and win. Let's talk about my favorite players at every position. And let's talk about we're going to mix it up a bit let's start with the tight end position dalton schultz with the dallas cowboys has been simply amazing i was sleeping on dalton schultz last season and he pretty much shut me up and shut me down and told waiver wire queen to get on board because he's gonna have a better season this year because there are several factors why i expect him to either either repeat what he did in 2021 or exceed his productivity from 2021. Obviously the biggest key factor is Amari Cooper was traded to the Cleveland Browns. Um, we know that Michael Gallup most likely is not going to be ready to start the upcoming season. Washington got hurt and is going to miss some time, which leaves obviously the top dog CD lamb. And then who is up next? It's going to be Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz had a hell of a season last year. And again, it's going down in 2022. And not to mention, you got Dak Prescott, who's going to get him the football. And that passing offense that the Cowboys get into, it is amazing. And I expect him to win. And I expect him to help you um, compete at the highest level in fantasy football every single week. He had 78 receptions, 808 receiving yards, and eight touchdowns. That is simply impressive. I want to see um, Dalton Schultz. Let's creep up to the 900. Let's, let's get to 10 touchdowns. It's not impossible because, again, the Cowboys get to that point in time where they are um, passing the ball, especially if they are in a situation to where they're down. They're going to be looking for CD and Schultz early on and often, and depending on when uh, Michael Gallup returns, we know that Schultz may still stay in that number two role in regards to targets. There are other players, obviously, on the Cowboys who are going to see a lot of um, action in the passing game. However, Dalton Schultz, if you get him at the tight end position, you have no worries in 2022 at the tight end position because they try to say the tight end position ain't deep. It ain't deep. But you can get a tight end like a Dalton Schultz or some other tight ends who are not the top five, but in Dalton Schultz's case, may produce similar stats to one of the top five um, tight ends. And he's getting touchdowns. Yes. So check out my video on the top 10 tight ends. And let's talk about my favorite wide receiver. And I have a million. If you watch the show, you know that I, I always say every wide receiver I talk about is my favorite. But this is one of my real favorites. C.D. Lamb with the Dallas Cowboys. So we're keeping it with, with the Cowboys. Yes, I ain't no Cowboy fan. I'm a Giants fan. I'm out here in Texas. But I am definitely 
a Giants fan, but I do show love and give credit. And CD, he is simply amazing. The biggest factor for CD Lamb is Amari Cooper was traded to the Browns, and we know Michael Gallup is out and most likely isn't going to be ready. And then with Washington um, getting hurt early on in training camp, but I did not expect uh, James Washington to to cut into any of uh, CeeDee Lamb or Michael Gallup's production and maybe the rookie um, Jalen Tolbert. I didn't expect that, okay? And again, we're saying, oh, CeeDee's gonna be the number one this year. No, CeeDee Lamb was the number one last year and he produced statistically like a number one and it's going to have an even better season. 2021 was a career year for CD Lamb in every um category, right? Um 79 receptions, 1102 receiving yards, six touchdowns, simply impressive. And again, he's the number 1. The Cowboys are going to be down sometimes, so they're going to be passing the ball and you know who Dak is going to look for. He's going to look for CD and he's going to look for Dalton Schultz, so you prioritize these two. Yes, with Schultz, you're going to have to get him a little bit earlier. However, you know that Dolton Schultz is not going to go ahead of any of the top five tight ends, but CeeDee Lamb, you're going to have to reach early, and it's not reaching, okay? if you This is your number one wide receiver because he's going to produce like a number one wide receiver, may finish top five in fantasy rankings at the wide receiver position because he has that type of talent and the potential in the situation shows that he may end up being a top five wide receiver statistically at the end of the season. So if you got to get him early, you get him early and you know that he's going to produce. Let's talk about my favorite running back. And he is simply amazing. And I got, y'all know when I start singing, that means it's going down and that means it's just, it's, it's just awesome. Joe Mixon running back with Cincinnati. Talked about Joe last season coming back and having a very good year, and he exceeded my expectations. I, again, said he was going to be good, but he exceeded expectations, and you got to understand in 2021, the uh, Cincinnati had a horrible offensive line, hence Joe Burrow being sacked a trillion times and the most sacked um, quarterback in the NFL. Obviously, Mixon was still able to produce, and that offensive line is going to be a hundred times better this season and think about what he did in 2021 with a horrible offensive line and a high powered offense 1205 rushing yards 13 touchdowns and a career high in um rushing attempts with 292 simply amazing with a terrible offensive line and a, a passing heavy offense okay a pass heavy offense they threw the ball a lot you got cd lamb T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, you got a lot of options and you're going to want to utilize those options. And we know what Chase did last season. And so to see Mixon really step up and have a brilliant year as a running back in fantasy, finishing top five, you want Mixon because it's going to be more of the same and he may be even slightly better because of the simple fact that offensive line improved. Now, I don't expect a whole lot much as a um, receiver, however, I want to see him, you know, increase those those uh, stats as a uh, receiving back. 42 receptions, and he had a career high of 314 yards, and he had three touchdowns. Okay, 314 yards, y'all, y'all like, oh, that's not much when you think of what Alvin Kamara is capable of doing and what CMC is capable of doing. So hopefully they can get him more involved as a receiving back, but I don't care if he's – catching a ball or not, he's going to produce for you. And I don't know about you. I don't want to play against Joe Mix. I don't want to play against any of uh, the offensive <laughs> players for Cincinnati because they produce. Joe Burrow went on a tear towards the end of, of, of the season last year and during the fantasy playoffs. And we know what Jamar Chase was doing. And nobody wanted to play Jamar Chase, play against um, an owner who had Jamar Chase. I know I didn't want to, but if you don't got Jamar Chase, then you you already know it's gonna be that that twenty plus twenty twenty plus and it may hurt you and you may lose so why not draft a player like this so with Joe Mixon 
if um, I had an opportunity to draft him, I would, especially in a redraft league, do it and do it with confidence because he's going to produce. He's on a team that is going to score a lot of points. He's going to see action in the red zone. So y'all go on and draft Joe Mixon, my fave, favorite, fave, 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 favorite running back this year in fantasy and these are just my favorites i'm not saying these guys are gonna end up uh number one in the rankings these are just the 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 players i simply just love and want on my team and when you think about the production these guys are capable of producing you should want them on your side too now coming in at the quarterback position we have the cool Derek carr quarterback with the las vegas Raiders. Now, most people sleep. And when I say they sleep, they be, oh, sleeping on Derek Carr. They grab a whole pillow and be falling asleep on Derek Carr. And we're not sleeping on Derek Carr because Derek Carr, when you really look at the, the numbers, he has been solid. And just think when you have stability, one, at the coaching position and the offense is stable and you have weapons and you have produced without these things, you should be able to produce. Now, it has been a while since um, Derek Carr has had a number one um, wide receiver. We're going to say that, okay, A.B., we know that didn't happen, didn't work. We know that Amari Cooper, that relationship um, ended when he was traded um, to the Cowboys. So they didn't really have a lot of time together. And it, eh, eh, eh. But now it's a... Derek Carr and uh, Devontae Adams. I expect some magic there. Um, they obviously played in college together, so they already have some type of rapport, and I'm sure it didn't take much for them to rekindle that rapport on the football field. And if you can get Devontae Adams, because he's still a top five wide receiver, don't get it twisted, then target Derek Carr a little bit later in your draft instead of reaching, especially in a redraft, and most importantly, if it's a one quarterback league, don't over invest in um, one of the top premium quarterbacks as if this is a super flex league or a two quarterback league. You don't have to do that. Grab Devontae Adams if that's the wide receiver you want. And then later on in the draft, um, draft Derek Carr. And during the draft, between um, drafting Adams and Carr, you load up on your other offensive positions and you're building a really good team. If you invest early in a, uh, your quarterback in a one quarterback redraft league, you're going to be missing out on, say, Jonathan Taylor, you know, Justin Jefferson, <laughs> Devontae Adams. Just top premium talent that you shouldn't ignore in a one quarterback redraft league. Don't ignore it. But back to the whole Derek Carr thing. You got the new coach. You have a true number one um, wide receiver, new offense. You have so many offensive weapons, just solid offensive weapons, starting with Devontae Adams, Josh Jacobs, who I simply still love. I don't know why they didn't pick up that fifth year option, but okay, maybe they'll pick it up. Well, they can't pick it up. Maybe they'll work something out after the season. Um, you got to think that uh, McDaniels is going to bring in that New England Patriots way where they got 8,000 running backs. He's going to use them all. Some of them look good the other night in the preseason game. I will not lie to you. However, the Raiders simply have a lot of weapons. Again, with um, Adams, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, who had a career season last year. In fantasy and just NFL statistically, it was very good. Um, Darren Waller, obviously, you know. Do we still consider him a top five tight end? I do, and you should as well. Okay. And then you again add in some other running backs. You got they drafted Zamir White, they uh signed Bolden, he came um with McDaniels from the Patriots, and then they have Kenyon Drake, they have a whole bunch of, they have a mirror do they got like 8,000 running backs. That's what I'm saying. But again, Josh Jacobs is very good. So I don't care what the Patriots way was with their running backs. I still expect Josh Jacobs 
to dominate um, the carries because I don't feel like any of the other running backs are going to be able to produce at the level that he is. The offensive line looked good during their um, the Hall of Fame game, but that was obviously not, you know, pretty much against um, – all the starters, the uh, first team for um, Jacksonville. So you got to factor that in. Okay. He finished as QB 13 last year, which isn't bad. And again, he did that without his top weapon, Darren Waller, and he didn't have a number one wide receiver. And it just was an unstable situation. We all know so much went down with Vegas last year. And for him to still finish as QB one and having, you know, a career high in, um, Attempts and completion is is and yards is amazing. Okay, six hundred and twenty six attempts, four hundred and twenty eight completions, four thousand eight hundred and four yards. They're having a party outside right now, y'all. Y'all can hear the party going on. It yeah, they're partying out there, and he was simply amazing. So again, strategy. You get your your wide receiver in, in, in Adams. Or even if you decide, hey, I'm going to go Darren Waller, Derek Carr. Still a very good pairing because it's going to be Adams and it's going to be Waller. There's Those will be those the top two targets and then probably um, Hunter Renfro. So that's a, a great strategy if you can either do the Adams, Carr, or Waller, Carr. Because you already know if you draft Adams, he's going to be your starter. If you draft Darren Waller, he's going to be your starter as well. And then Derek Carr can be your starter because I do believe he's going to to improve on the areas that was simply a, a bit weak. So as a quarterback, you want to have more than um, you want to have uh, more than 23, 24 touchdowns. And again, I want to see um, him increase those touchdowns because 23, 24 touchdowns from a quarterback in today's NFL have to be much better than that and decrease the interceptions. And it's going to be a very good year. He may sneak into the top 10 statistically at the end of the fantasy football season. And if he does, this is a great move for you because you didn't reach and draft him early. You draft him right where he needed to be drafted and you load it up and you have this team that is stacked at every position because you draft well. You know, we have a lot of great content. Check out this video on some top wide receivers that you should, some sleeper wide receivers that you should be um, checking for. We have the information for you so you can load up on those other offensive positions. And then you have your quarterback who may be drafted as a top 15 quarterback, but say he finishes top eight, which will, you know, help you during the season got to do it. All right, y'all, make sure you leave some comments and let me know your thoughts on my top players, my favorite players at every position for the 2022 fantasy football season. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have a lot of great content, which is going to help you throughout the fantasy football season so you can achieve your ultimate goal and get to that championship and win, 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 because that is the ultimate goal to win your fantasy football league. I'll see y'all Next Wednesday, we have a great special mock draft, and this is going to be a two-quarterback league, premium, two-tight end league, PPR mock draft. So I'll see you next Wednesday because we got to make sure that you see a variety of, of mocks based on several different roster um, formats and scoring form formats and settings because – we all know. We all addicted. We don't just play in one league and one format. We be in multiple leagues. So it's good to be exposed to a variety of um, mocks so you can be able to prepare for the various um, leagues you're going to be in. So I'll see y'all on Wednesday. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Blown Coverage Fantasy Football Podcast.